up welcome back guys and what's up it's amz blood so today i wanted to just do a quick update on the cal city missing boys sincere and classic or orin and orson west there hasn't been a lot of updates but if you do have any tips the numbers are below 760-373-8606 as well as 800 the lost is the toll free number the boys' families, biological and otherwise, have both spoken out. There has been a news update because, again, it has been two months, eight weeks, since these boys reported missing, and there really has been no updates um, that have led to anything particularly important or valid or valuable in this case. There is no current suspects, and the boys basically just vanished into thin air. Here is the recent KGET 17 news report that gives a bit of an update on some of these Facebook groups and the online communities really just lending a big help. From our 17 follow-up files, today marks two months since two little boys were reported missing from their Kern County home. 17's Pro Shaheen has been on the story from the very beginning and joins us with this look at the online community's efforts to help find these boys. Pro, good evening. Good evening, Moses. This case has extended way past the boundaries of California City, the little town 76 miles east of Bakersfield, where the boys lived. People from all over the nation have connected with this story and are finding their own ways to help. Three-year-old Orson and four-year-old Orrin West were reported missing in California City on December 21st, two months ago today. California City police say there are no named suspects in the case and nothing pointing to where the boys could be. And we literally have people from the UK, we have people from Texas, from Colorado, from Hawaii, from Florida, everywhere, you know, looking for them and trying to find clues. Nikki Laverne lives in the Bay Area and is an admin in a Facebook group called LV United We Stand. LV is the initials for Laura Vasquez, the woman who started the group. Its purpose is to help find the boys through organizing search parties and sharing information. It feels like they're loved. It, and I hope they're probably too young to even see what's going on, but I hope that someday they will know that we never gave up, ever, until it's over, you know, and we will all stick together. Laverne is one of many who have felt personally touched by the boys' story, despite having no previous connection to them. There are at least seven different Facebook groups dedicated to finding the boys, some of them with thousands of members. Everybody pieces their information together, and we're literally all communicating. We're like a community, of, of, we're a family. And sometimes we do argue, you know, and sometimes we do have like a different set of views. For many, social media is the main source for information on the case. Yeah, I watch something on it every day, either it's YouTube or, or Facebook or the news interviews. Jennifer Nobles is a Bakersfield resident who's followed the case since it began. She recently took money out of her own pocket to put up two billboards seeking information on the boys. I'm a mom and I have little, you know, I have a couple of small children and a, and a, you know, college child. And I, I always worry about that. Like, what if, you know, they ever got kidnapped? So there it is. And I personally am, am part of this Join Orin and Orson West California City Missing Boys discussion group. It is an amazing group. There is over almost 3,000 of us, over 2K. And I've been in the group since pretty much the week that the boys went missing. Um, we share tips. Uh, YouTube videos between all sorts of different creators. I've seen some amazing creators, small, large, everyone covering this case. Um, there was a really good point in one of the in the group that I wanted to share with you. I've made it anonymous, but this really registered with me, and I'll leave it with this. Okay, so why are there four children removed from the home? Hear me out. I didn't think of it until like recently. I said, yeah, protocol, common practice, no big deal. Then it hit me. I can't think of a single missing child's case where the other children were taken into protective custody. Yes, the pu public has been outraged, but at the AP, not their kids, AP being adoptive parents. So if they aren't being protected from the public, who are they being protected from and why? It would only make sense that they are being protected from the family. But why? What evidence leads them to believe that these kids are safe for away? Yes, I understand two children are missing, but in other cases, even those where children have been found missing, then deceased, the siblings stayed in the home. Think of John Benet Ramsey. 
And that is all I have right now, guys. Please spread the word on the Cal City Boys. Again, here is the flyers that I found in the group that I wanted to share with you guys um, in my Facebook group. So thank you all for watching. As always, spread the word. Keep the boys in your prayers. And let's bring them home, guys. One love.